going for one more. Can Vladimir win a fourth heavyweight boxing title for the Klitschko brothers? In the interview, Vladimir Klitschko, boxing heavyweight champion. Mr. Klitschko, here we are in your management team's place in Hamburg. You're always on the road. What brings you back to Hamburg? Hamburg is the heimatstadt for me, nach Kiev. Hamburg is my second home after Kiev. I've had a connection to this city since the end of 1996, when we first arrived here. We didn't immigrate to Hamburg or to Germany. We're Ukrainian. When I say we, I mean me and my brother Vitali. We still have our Ukrainian passports, but Germany is very close to our hearts. We really do feel like adopted children in the truest sense of the word. And now I feel that even more with the fight here on July the 2nd in Hamburg's Imtech Arena against England's David Hay. It's another highlight for me in this city. The match with David Hay is about your third heavyweight title. Is that your only motivation for fighting him? Of course, it's about the one and only title that I and my brother don't yet have. And that's the WBA belt, which is still for the moment in the hands of David Hay. Besides the title, David Hay personally attacked the Klitschko family two and a half years ago. For example, with the decapitated picture of me in Men's Health magazine. And then he wore a T-shirt to a press conference with an image of both me and Vitali with no heads. That was below the belt, and not an appropriate way for him to try and promote himself. There are certain things that are acceptable, but that was a step too far. So there's a personal motive too. And if I can teach David Hay some manners in the process, all the better. His behaviour hasn't really been normal. And that's what I'm going to show him on July the 2nd, in 12 rounds, when I knock him out in the last and final round. So you want to teach David Hay a lesson in the ring, or do you have to block that out to concentrate on the sport? At the end of the day, I'm only concentrated on the sporting aspect. You shouldn't underestimate him. He's won a lot of fights through knockouts, and he has heavy hands. That's what we say in boxing, heavy hands. He's unbelievably fast, and speed is incredibly important in boxing. He's also at an age where he's gained enough experience, so I would never underestimate David Hay as a boxer. So you're saying David Hay can be dangerous, and you have to be ready for any outcome. What would a defeat mean for you and your career? I'm not even thinking about losing, because I'm not going to lose on July the 2nd. Only one person will lose, and that's David Hay. And I think it's important for him to experience that failure, because he'll become more mature in the process. He'll understand what he did and what lines he crossed, and he'll learn not to cross them again. Another scenario, you win the fight, what comes after that? Then you would have fulfilled your greatest dream, owning all four major heavyweight titles together with your brother. So what then? I haven't thought at all what will happen afterwards and what I'll do. Right now I'm just concentrating on July the 2nd and nothing else. You're very close to your brother Vitaly. You guys have been through thick and thin together. But were there times when you wished you had a sister? Oh, God, they thank that we can't have a sister. Thank goodness we don't have a sister. Can you imagine that? She would be over two meters tall. Actually, my mother asked me when I was eight or nine if I wanted a little brother or sister. And right away I said yes, thinking I could do the things to him or her that my older brother Vitali used to do to me. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. 
und äh, leider kam dann gar nicht. What was it that Vitali would do to you that you wanted to share? Well, he taught me to box. He told me to put some gloves on and he said, we're going to box. I thought that sounds interesting. I put the boxing gloves on for the first time in my life. And then he hit me so hard that I saw stars. I thought, this is not my kind of sport. I didn't want to keep going. We had a lot of fun together. I think you can get a really up close and personal view into our lives and our relationship in the documentary that's coming out in Germany in June. It'll be on release and in other countries too, including the USA. You've acted in that movie, you have a degree in sports science, you speak four languages. Why did you decide to be a boxer? When I was 14, I wanted to become a doctor. At that time, we were still in the Soviet Union. My brother came back from a trip to the US and showed me pictures and told me stories, and he brought gifts too. In the Soviet Union, things were different. I read the book Robinson Crusoe and it inspired me. I wanted to travel to faraway places and see palm trees and eat bananas at night. We didn't have many in the Soviet Union. It sounds funny, but that's how it was. I wanted so badly to travel abroad and discover the world. Sports presented the perfect opportunity to get out of the country and see new things. You have a lot of critics around the world, especially in the US. You have a tactical boxing style where you try to wear down your opponent, and some of those critics say it's not especially thrilling. What do you say to that? One of my greatest critics is probably David Hay. He says my boxing style is not very spectacular. But I think my record speaks for itself. I've knocked out 49 boxers in the ring. And I've promised David Hay that he will be the 50th. That's what will happen. He said the other 49 were bums. But I'm going to show him that he's just the same as them. You're also involved in a lot of projects outside the ring, like the Laureus Foundation, helping disadvantaged children around the world. Why this project? We were all kids once, and we had our own worries or problems. When you travel around the world, you see what life is like in other countries. I think when football or hockey or high jump stars say, you can do it to a child, and they have access to training facilities, it's a real motivation with a personal touch. It's worked really well. The foundation has taken care of more than a million children in the last eight to ten years. And it continues to grow. I'm incredibly proud that I and my brother are part of the Laureus community. And we are happy to take part. Mr. Klitschko, thanks for the conversation and your time. Thank you. Thank you.